ain't shit. Your dog ain't shit. You got a cute nephew, but his uncle a bitch. Whoop, whoop. Somebody call the whole police. And your granny ain't shit. Makes you rest in peace. Cause you done pissed off a petty bitch. A petty bitch. Well, I hope you fucking ready, bitch. Get ready, bitch. I'ma hack your computer. I'ma egg your house. I don't do cardio, but I'ma run my mouth. I'ma hide in your bushes so you scared to come out. Let everybody know that you use me for cloud. Cause there's a whole lot of miles on that Honda. You done rolled every anaconda and Wakanda. You ain't shit. And your mama ain't shit. So Jake Paul just went eight rounds with the 58-year-old man that had eight blood transfusions in June. Remember when I told you guys I saw pictures of Mike Tyson with tubes up his, two, um, tubes up his nose, had a tube in each nostril, and he was walking like, you know, as if he was on shaky legs, and you could see that everything he did in training, it took everything he had just to complete those drills and exercises. So, with that being said, y'all, what did Jake Paul actually accomplish in beating a 58-year-old man that just had eight blood transfusions in the month of June? What did he actually accomplish? And this is a guy that you guys get behind to want to see in a championship fight. Why don't he just go to a nursing home and just pick out the most unhealthy patient in the nursing home and fight? I shouldn't have said that because he might take my advice and go do it. Car. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. I, I am the, the way car. where your vehicle car. was located, your tough vehicle car. was not like that. Sit down. No. You sit down. Get on the ground. Yeah, I'm gonna call an ambulance. You know. Netflix gave their first boxing special last night. So let me give you just a little bit of boxing talk. You know, whenever big money's involved, people think that it was a success. They think that this is everything. Right? The amount of money, the amount of people that showed up in the arena. You know what people fail to overlook, though? Well, they fail to acknowledge. They overlook this. How many people is disappointed and let down due to the outcome of the fights and due to the lack of action, intrigue in the ring itself when fighters don't engage? Let's just look at what we saw. We saw a fight where a guy and Mario Barrios fought a guy that nobody knew this was supposed to be Mario Barrios in a position of let me go in here, destroy this guy, and look good, become a top name, where people are going to see me on Netflix in front of this big ass crowd, right? And I'm not knocking him for what happened. I I I see Mario Barrios for who he is as a fighter, and I'm not shocked by what happens in the ring. And I don't feel like he was exposed. I mean, he has two losses. You know, Mario Barrios is a is a you know, he's a decent fighter. He's, 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 he has some skill, you know, but his outcome wasn't what people thought. And even from the start, you can hear even in the commentary how they were praising him. Like, they thought he was going to go through this guy, and he didn't. Well, we saw Katie Taylor basically get a win that the majority of the building was unhappy about. Now, I don't care about the bias I don't care about the, you know, we're from the same country, you whatever. I don't care about all that. Looking at the fight itself, the fans in that building wasn't happy. And looking at the video thumbnails and things that I've seen and read today, well, yeah, a lot of people feel the same way, that they feel like there was a robbery there. Then they have this YouTube bout that happened where the event itself and what they're trying to do 
I'm not going to say it was a complete fail because, well, when they have a second go at it, we'll have to see the way things go. But they very well could have put the nail in the coffin just from their first event because I'm not seeing any good reactions to this event. Not just because Mike Tyson didn't win, but Mike Tyson went there and looked like pure shit. And then the event itself, it was really underwhelming. Now, Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano, to me, had the most action-packed fight. They had the only good fight of the whole night. I mean, Mario Barrios' fight with the guy was... Um, it was it, it was a decent scrap, you know. Um, but also, to to a casual... They don't pay attention to a lack of defense, a lack of head movement, you know, a lack of, you know, ring IQ. They don't they don't pay attention to that. They just see blood and see fish flying and they, ah, they just don't understand the difference of a very skillful fighter versus someone who's good at fighting. Well, at the end of the day, we won't know until we move forward and see the way things go. But this was a fight. This was an event where, to me, it wasn't really an attractive event. I personally, out of everything on it, I could really give two shits about the Tyson-Paul fight. I was really interested to see the Katie Taylor and Serrano fight. And the reason that I was really more keyed into that fight, for one, was because I saw the first fight and then two. Well, I'm looking at where Alicia Baumgartner fits in or whoever else may be in line to fight either Katie Taylor or Amanda Serrano. After the fight, you know, where the claims of the headbutt, where I watched that fight twice. I just watched it again tonight, and I didn't see any intentional headbutts. I feel like with their styles, the way they come forward, they're always going to have that issue. And at the end of the day, with those type of claims... You know, Katie Taylor's team, they may say, you know what? No, the hell with Serrano. We're not giving her another rematch. We don't have to. We got the win. And guess what? Tough for her, right? Because of the claims. Calling her a dirty fighter. They're saying she's, you know, her trainer says, she, you know, Katie Taylor's a very sweet person outside of the ring. But she's very dirty inside the ring. She did the same thing with Chantel Cameron and many, many other fighters. So that might be a fight that they say, you know what? Nah, forget you. Right? Deal with your loss. Well, we don't know. But when I'm looking at, you know, I already gave my assessment on what I, how I, you know, what could possibly happen because you never know what's going to happen come fight night. But at the end of the day, uh, Alicia Baumgartner, from what I understand, she has a rematch with, you know, Delphine Pursuit. Should she get past that fight, and unless she has a bad night, I don't see why she wouldn't. I would think she want to fight Katie Taylor. Now, I'm looking at looking at it this way. She could go the Katie Taylor route, and if Katie Taylor wants the fight, then you have a fight. If Katie Taylor doesn't want the fight, they could go with the route of, well, even though Katie Taylor got her hand raised, I think that Serrano won. So actually, on her record, she lost, but I'm fighting the winner as far as I'm concerned. They can take that route. Maybe her and Katie Taylor have an actual feud. Who knows? I don't know. I don't think people need to take cheap shots and, and make up things to make a fight happen, but that's just what people do. If she really wants to move up in weight and win titles in different weight classes, well, that's what she's going to have to do, go up and fight these women. In terms of, like I said, the way I see the fight going, I, and it really, to me, it depends on Alicia Baumgartner. Because Amanda Serrano fights the same way every fight. Katie Taylor fights the same way pretty much every fight. It's either she just tries to outspeed you, tries to outmove you, you know, try to throw punches faster and, and, and get in, um, get in, get out. And I can see that both of them... You can see the wear and tear on both fighters. And I feel like they both slowed down enough to where Alicia should... I honestly, like I said in, in the previous video, about two, three years ago, 
I would pick Serrano to beat Alicia Baumgartner because I just feel like her work rate was too much. And like I said, we all know that Alicia didn't have the best gas tank. And when she empties out, she empties out. But looking at what I saw last night, Alicia Baumgartner, I don't see how her and her team can't watch either one of them fight and see where she could take advantage over both of them. And honestly, I think she may have stylistically, she'll probably have more trouble with Katie Taylor if if Alicia Baumgartner's stamina doesn't become an issue and she can fight the rounds and she should still be able to beat Katie because Katie does try to box but Katie comes in a straight line and Katie leans forward you see when fighters don't turn it to hip like they're supposed to and then most of the females, like I said, they throw punches from the outside. And they lean forward to try to get more shot power in their punch. So they lean forward. Evander Holyfield did that a lot as well. When he tried to really get power in his shot, he would lean forward. And, you know, but even though he leaned forward, he'd at least, like, you know, bring the shot here. The women push their shots. You know, they push their punches. And looking at the way both of them fight, if Alicia Baumgartner is on point, I can see her waiting back and countering with a nice hook, counter with the straight through the middle. I, I can just see her countering them if she fights the way she's supposed to. And basically get it to the point where she's landing, you know, hard, solid punches, accuracy, pinpoint accuracy is there, and make it where Katie Taylor has no choice but to try to get physical. Katie doesn't have a lot of power, though. See, that's the thing. Katie would be in harm's way running into shots with that, you know, sloppy, just coming forward, trying to land shots. She can completely outclass Katie if she's on point. But I think Serrano takes a punch better than Katie does. And with Serrano, even though she's about pressure, she doesn't faint. She doesn't sidestep. She doesn't pivot. She doesn't do anything. She just comes forward, just throwing punches. And I'm looking at both of them. And, and like I said, I listen. When Katie was younger, I was more impressed with Katie because her movement, her in and out. Serrano with that relentless pressure, but I always liked Katie's style better. Like, I feel like she was a better fighter than Serrano with overall. But being that she can't really hurt Serrano, Serrano can get in and rough her up. And Katie fights to try to keep you off. She doesn't have that type of... She has the speed of, of her feet to get in and out and move around. But when it comes to landing shots, she she like like if you watch Katie Taylor, she'll slip and move from the outside. But when it comes time to come inside and land punches, she same thing. No feints, you know, no pivots, no no side stepping, no you know nothing. Just no special effects. She just straight in, and she'll eat shots, and she eats more punches than she was. She was eating more punches than she was landing last night. She was coming in and getting hit with just too many punches, and I'm watching her like, where's the head movement for both of them? So, if, and I say if because, like I said, a lot of times you see things a certain way, but that doesn't mean the fighter's going to go in there and, and do what you're saying. Maybe they don't see the same things either. Who, who, I don't know. But I know what I see in them and what I've seen in her. Um, like, especially in her last fight with Leonardo too. I feel like if she's on point, those fights would be easy for her to win than people think. If she's on point. If her stamina is not an issue. But that's yet to be seen. I can't say how consistent Baumgarten is in terms of how she fights smartly. Because the Leonardo 2 fight was the one fight I saw where I saw her doing better. Offensively, putting her combinations together. And where she wasn't looking like her stamina was an issue. And she finished strong. So she had a, that was like to be the best performance I've ever seen her have. But then you had the drug situation. So, you know, you don't know what's what and who's doing what. So, that all being said, I feel like for 
Felicia Baumgartner. She need to stay active, stay healthy, keep sharp, pay attention to what's going on. Stop worrying about Clarissa Shields because she's not willing to go up to 154 pounds. She's not willing to go up to 160 pounds. She needs to just focus on what's realistic and what's in front of her. And like I said, you know, you can look at a fighter. See, Shields is consistent. I have no reason to believe Shields can't beat any of these females. But I'm aware things can happen. But I don't see any of them even testing Shields. I think Shields beats the shit out of all three of them easily. I, I, I just don't feel anything coming from them that Shields won't be able to handle. Okay, that even being said, hey, even Michaela Mayer has a title now. Yeah, so Baumgartner has options between those three if they want it. And I do believe Michaela Mayer wants it because she wants that rematch. We'll see how things go. But as it, you know, as it stands right now, hey, Katie Taylor got the win. Like it or not, we'll see where Amanda Serrano goes from here. And we'll also see if any fighters try to block any other fighter from getting the certain shots. And, you know, remember, people, the female divisions, none of them are that deep. So they have no choice but to go up and down and wait to fight each other. And, you know, Shields then went from 154 to 175. So some of these women are going to have to wind up coming to 154. And if they're not, well, hey, because Shields don't need them, to be honest with you. They need her. None of them. Katie doesn't need her. Katie's already established. You know, Serrano's established. So the three of them don't need each other. But Baumgartner, she need she need them. Not so much Shields. That's just her talking. And I don't even see that fight being competitive if it was to happen. But um, she need she has work to do. Because even though she did what she's done, she has a stain on her reputation. And not only that, she just doesn't have enough wins over enough big names yet. To you know, and there's not a lot of big names, so hopefully for her, she can get her hands on a Katie Taylor or a Serrano and win. I mean, and Alicia's a good fighter. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it fucked up. She's a good fighter, but consistency is what I go by, and I can't say how consistent she is. And she does have a loss on her record as well. So, and she avenged that loss, and. In that same loss that she avenged, that was the best I've ever seen her look. The sharpest I've ever seen her look from bell to bell. We'll see how things go. I hit you guys later with some more boxing talk.